Well, hello! Welcome again to Blender Tutorials for Board Game Assets. Still don't have a catchy name, we still need to think about that. Um, I apologize, first of all, for not being able to get these out faster, but I really wanted to be able to get at least this first part of this tutorial out uh, for uh, custom-made tokens. Tokens that won't be square or circle or any basic uh, blender shape. So there is a method of doing this pretty quickly if you have um, Adobe uh, Creative Suit. There is another method of doing this just within Blender, which is a little bit more time consuming, which I will hopefully get to in the next one, which, please God, won't be too far off. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, we have our token here. Okay, we have this skull. Okay, so we need to turn this image into a token. We can't do it with using a circle or a square, so what do we do? First of all, we need to open this up in Photoshop. Again, I will have another method for this using just Blender, but if you have this, uh, if you have Adobe Creative Suit, it's much, much faster. Go to Blending Options and create a color overlay. Okay, just to create a silhouette of, of the token. We would want to take this and turn it into a vector. Vector is basically a mathematically based uh, image, which can be infinitely like enlarged and, and, and expanded because it's, it's all mathematical based, it's not pixel based. Export this as a PNG. Okay, see I already did that. All right. Now, open the silhouette in Adobe Illustrator. Go, we should get something like that. Uh, what you want to do now to be able to turn this to instead of pixels being vectors, you need to go to image trace and just click that as it is. Now you see this the image became sharper, that's because it's not vectors. Before you do anything else, go to the image tracing panel and you'll see that the geometry isn't exactly smooth because I guess it's a problem with the token itself, but uh, they usually have bleed lines, which are much smoother. So you just need to take the threshold all the way up till it just goes completely black and then just take it down a notch. Okay, now we see we have something like a little bit of uh, something here that we need to get rid of. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, ignore white, that's important. So it will take out the white edges that it comes with uh, automatically when you put it in Illustrator and expand you see now we can see all the vectors the vector points that come in this could be infinitely uh, zoomed in it's a mathematical uh, image okay we have this little bit bit here don't think you will have that on your image and I'll just delete that okay now what you want to do is select your token save as and save it as an SVG file. These SVG files could be read in Blender. So just save it as an SVG, I already did. And hop into Blender. Blender file, kill the cube, and import search SVG. Go to where you have the token saved, import it. Let's zoom in. Oh, let me turn on the hotkeys. Okay. Zoom in. Select the curve. Zoom in. Okay, now we still have this little bit left over, so let's kill that again. Uh, here we go. Number pad 7 to see it from the top. Now this is really important to see it from the top. Go to edit mode and you can see that you see the same vector points around the token. Okay. Now for this token, this seems like a lot of data. Some tokens would be much simpler, but if I zoom in, I, I can see if there's anything that might be um, unnecessary, like points I could delete. But, you know, just looking through it, it seems like I guess I could like remove some here. Delete where 
axes just to smooth it out a little. Let's see here. Can delete that one. You know, less less geometry makes it lighter and, and smoother and, and it just it works better that way. You don't have something that's too complex. We can definitely remove that one, I think. No, keep that in. Okay. Don't worry about that too much. You know, it, it might be just fine the way it is. Oops. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Okay, these are the next steps you need to do. First of all, this is called a curve. A curve is like you see, it's something that's completely flat and it's based on, rather than the other type of vertices that we saw previously, these ones have these handles, which you can manipulate. Okay, this is called a curve but we want it to be a mesh because that way we could give it uh, uh, thickness, we could give it uh, all sorts of textures. So in order to do that, we go to Object, Convert, Mesh. And now if you go to Edit Mode by pressing Tab, you can see it's a mess. The geometry is all weird. We have all these lines. This is not what we want. So we're gonna have to fix that, but in a moment. First of all, tap out of edit mode and let's give it some thickness like we did before. Add modifier, uh, solidify, set the offset to one and thickness tokens are usually about four millimeters thick. Okay, so if we go to the side we'll see it's uh, about the right size and here we can see another artifact, I think they're called, uh, that we're gonna have to take care of in a moment. Okay, so that's, that's good. Apply this. Okay, and now you'll still have the messy geometry, but at least we have the thickness here. Uh, if this happens to you, and this happened to me a lot of times where just vertices would stick out, just make sure your selection on uh, vertex select, select the vertices, press X and dissolve the vertices. You don't want to delete them, otherwise you'll have a hole. Okay, you want to dissolve vertices and that just fixes that problem. Okay, let's go back to top view. Okay, and now this method I learned from a tutorial I found surfing YouTube. This will fix the geometry. You need to go and add a remesh modifier. And it disappeared. Don't worry about it. Go to sharp. Let me just see. Yeah, we definitely want sharp. And now you can see here by turning turning it on and off over here, it has this little monitor we can see exactly what it's doing. So it kind of made the edges sharper, so we need to add a little bit more depth. Usually six is enough. See, yeah, barely any difference there. You could do seven, but that just adds more geometry. Again, you want to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, that looks good, and we need to apply this. And now let's look, go to edit mode. Ah, oh, much better. You show this to a 3D artist, he sort of sighs in relief. And yeah, now that's the basic model for our uh, token. Let's give it some texture, destroy this, uh, give it a new material, uh, base color, image texture, open, find your token, apply, go to vector, generated, and change to shading view. Now. We have our token. Now we want to add this, the cardboard sides again, which we created in the previous tutorial, but we don't need to recreate it. We could always, we need to create assets once and we could always reuse them. Before I do that, let's put in some roughness to make it shiny like we like. And now all we need to do is go to file append, that's important, and search for your previous blend file. Okay, so remember we created the tokens, go into tokens, go, you'll see all these files, go to material, and then choose cardboard side. Click append, and now click your token, add a new material, and it should appear in here, just imported from the previous project. Click on that, tap edit mode, face select, Select the ring around here by pressing Alt and then clicking one of the edges. 
a loop and click assign. And that's it. We have a beautiful first player token, which you have in the beginning of the game and then you forget about it. One last thing, um, sometimes the origin point is all off when you work with this method. So just click set origin, origin to geometry, and then things will like work the way you expect them to. If you don't do that and you try to like rotate it around, it rotates around this axis rather than its own. So don't forget to do that. This is from an upcoming video I'm making called uh, Dino Discovery. I featured it in the first tutorial. And yeah, it's coming around really, really nicely. I can't wait to show you how it's come out. It's really, really cool. And next time I will show you how to do this thing exactly, but in Blender. In case you don't have Creative Cloud, I know it's unfair that I'm using Adobe for, you know, maybe most people don't even have Creative Cloud. It costs a lot of money after all. So I will teach a method that can be done exclusively in, exclusively in Blender. All right. So please share, like, and subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions about this tutorial, any other previous one, or any Blender related questions. And if you want me to cover anything in the future, please feel free to hit the comments below. And yeah, may you always be the first player.